Hey everyone, Jason Shepard here of M0A.com and welcome into day 15 now of our 31 day to safer pilot challenge. In day 15, we're tackling the topic of spatial disorientation. What would you do if you found yourself inadvertently into an IFR condition or an IFR rated pilot and had like a vacuum pump failure? Could you handle that situation? What if you became spatially disoriented? That's what we're going to talk about in this video. What if it happened? And of course, how to better prepare yourself in your flight training for spatial disorientation. Let's cut to the clip. So let's start with what is spatial disorientation? Well, so the definition of it is really the inability to interpret the aircraft attitude. Again, imagine you inadvertently, uh, as a VFR pilot, fly into a cloud. You lose the aircraft horizon. Uh, you know, you're, the, you're sitting in the seat. It tells you one thing. Your instruments are telling you another thing. You, you've lost the horizon. You're completely disoriented. You don't know if you're left, right, upside down. You don't know what's going on. You are spatially disoriented. All right, bad situation to find yourself in. There's many different types of spatial disorientation, but that's not within the scope of, of this lesson here. Um, the two main things I want to share with you first off is how, how I teach it. Um, you know, there, I don't want to say there's, there's not a right way and a wrong way, but, but let me tell you this. Um, quick story, when I became a flight instructor, one of my favorite things to teach was spatial disorientation because how most flight instructors do it um, is this. Picture this. They, you've got the foggles on. You're simulating IFR time. Um, they tell you, okay, you know, the instructor tells you it's my airplane. Go ahead and close your eyes. Put your head down. And the flight instructor just rips the airplane around. Hard left turn. Pulling up. Hard right turn. I used to love that because I would whip that airplane around. I would confuse my students so much. You know, really, I was just making them sick. But none of them had the heart to tell me that. Um, and then I'd say, okay, recover. And I'd have them in some cockamamie attitude and make them recover from it. But, you know, that's not really how it happens. There is not going to be an instructor up there just ripping you around then saying recover. I want you to induce the spatial disorientation. So what I do now, and I had a great instructor uh, teach me this, is you still fly the airplane. However, I have you close your eyes and put your chin to your chest. I mean, you're, lo you're, you're straight down anyways, but your eyes are closed. But you're still flying the airplane. And I tell you, okay, give me a nice shallow turn to the left. And now a shallow climbing turn, which ends up being a descending turn. And you begin disorienting yourself because what's going to happen in the real world? That's how you're going to do it. You're just going to disorient yourself. So instructors, if you're listening, you know, great thing to try with your students. Let them fly the airplane with their eyes closed. You give them simple little climbs and descents and turns. Let them disorient them, themselves and then have them recover because that's what's really going to happen. You'll find they're going to get more disoriented, more confused um, if you do it that way. Obviously, guys, if you want to practice this on your own, take a buddy up who's going to be a safety pilot when you do this. I also find uh, students who normally get sick doing spatial disorient disorientation stuff don't really get as sick when they induce it upon themselves. Um, again, that's what's really going to happen. So practice that. Fly yourself into it. Um, you know, obviously with a safety pilot or with an instructor, of course. Um, so let yourself induce it. Now, the most important part of this lesson is the recovery. You know, why else would you even practice this? Um, you know what, I may get ripped apart a little bit for this, but this is how I teach it. Uh, and this has been the, the most logical and the best way to do it. The recovery I teach airspeed indicator first. Um, students fall into the dirty, nasty trap of I'm disoriented, you know, I'm going to look at the attitude indicator first to check it. However, that attitude indicator is unreliable beyond 60 degrees. Why? Because it is a gyroscopic instrument. Beyond 60 degrees, it is highly likely it could tumble. It's just, a, it's just like a top spinning in there. Um, if it tumbles, it's going to be confused itself until it writes itself. So you may be trying to be correcting it when you're so screwed up that the attitude indicator has tumbled. The one instrument in there that's going to tell you something true is that airspeed indicator. 
because there's two possible things you can do when you're spatially disoriented. You can either be super, super slow and be risking to stall that aircraft, which means you need to apply some power and then baby that nose on down, or you could be so fast that you are risking the structural, structural integrity of that airplane, which means you need to baby that power back to idle and smoothly bring that nose back to level. Look at your airspeed indicator. It's going to tell you those scenarios. You're either too slow or you're too fast, and then cross-check. Then check your attitude indicator. Then work your way through the rest of the instrumentation. But your eyes need to go to that airspeed indicator first, then cross-check. Again, there's only two scenarios. You're either going to stall it or you're going to break something off that airplane. I don't mean to be so blunt, but it's just the honest truth. Airspeed indicator first on that recovery. Um, get out there. This is something that needs to be practiced. It's a scenario you can practice in your head through chair flying, but get out there with a safety pot, climb up plenty of altitude, 3,000 feet minimum. Um, you know, get out there with a safety pilot, preferably get out there with an instructor and do this sort of stuff. On the recovery, try that. Try the airspeed indicator first, adjust the throttle accordingly, then adjust the nose, then cross check from there. Um, that is your recovery. That's the important part. That's all I've got for you guys today. I hope you enjoyed it. Leave me a comment below on what you think. You know what? Maybe you do it differently, and that's what we're here to do. Bounce ideas off of one another. We're really a pilot mastermind group, and that's what we want to build. We're just out there to simply create safer pilots, and that's what we're doing. So leave me a comment below on saferpilotchallenge.com. Hope you enjoyed this video, guys. And most importantly, remember that a good pilot is always learning. Have a great day, guys. See ya.